Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I am in the deepest of my creepy basement and I'm here at the water heater because I have been playing with some thoughts of powering my water heater from my solar panels and right here is the water heater element we're gonna have a closer look at that uh, normally it's powered by 400 volts this is a 3000 watt water heater can actually heat the 300 liters of water in my water heater uh, fairly quick it doesn't need to be boiling it really doesn't and but i use this 400 volt plug for that i would like it to run off solar but i would really also like to have it available for the 400 volts so that i can do both so I've been playing around with actually just powering it on the taps here and I think it might be possible but I'll bring you down here to the water heater element to uh, show you what's going on and then uh, right over here, right over there, here's the solar panel setup. This is the little cheap Chinese charger thing. I have a battery pack here and uh, yeah, that's uh, what I'm also playing around with. So this is the thing that electrically is able to heat this rather yeah it's 300 liters and it can be heated by electric it can be heated by the sun and it can be heated by my furnace my uh, wood stove that is not set up actually it has kind of two buttons one of them you can see it there is a button behind this rubber seal it's not something that is much used and we will go see why then there's a thermostat you can change the water temperature this one goes from 30 degrees celsius to 90 degrees celsius so we'll just take that off and i have already unscrewed this i have been playing with this and inside here we can see that here comes in the wire with the 400 volts and this wire is not being used and that's kind of a little bit of a problem because that's the zero it's not a problem for this working it's a problem for it working in my head because what we are actually using are the three phases there's one there one there and one there and each of them are 230 volts um, they are combined in a way so that they together brings the voltage up to about 380 400 volts all of those three phases goes into this box and this is kind of an it's an emergency thermostat switch off there is the three wires that goes in it's hard to see but in here comes in three wires and three wires goes up out here and this is a big switch it can it can switch off all the power to the heating element the heating element is in here and that goes into the tank and it's uh, it's some big resistors more or less that heats the water so this is the last result switch everything off protection circuit so if it becomes too hot this will disconnect everything and to get it working again there's a press button to uh, to press in and there is a sensor this green wire is a pressure sensor temperature sensor um, more or less it's it goes in here in the middle of the heating element there's a hole and there is a sensor going in there you can see might be able to see the green wire going in there yeah it's down there there is also this gray wire that is going in there so there is two sensors that goes into the heating element to check the temperature so this one is able to to switch off the three phases then some of the connection goes up to this thing and that is the one that regulates how hot the water should be so there is actually two switch off circuits this is the emergency switch off circuit and this is the every day now the water is hot enough switch off circuit and we can listen to that if i turn it down far enough it will turn off there it is and this is called a two-stage switch off if i turn it on slowly enough you can hear that it actually switches on two you can hear this 
there was two switches. Yeah, so what that does is that when the water is heating up, it will, well, when it's too cold, it will be using both heating elements, but when it closes to the right temperature, it will switch off one of them so that it, the temperature will rise slower. I don't know why it does that, but it does. Inside here, there is actually three heating elements that goes into the water heater, but they have all been connected together at the bottom. I don't know if we can see that. I can probably zoom in on that. Down here, the tree heating element has been short-circuited, so all of them acts as... They have a common ground, if you can call it that. So more or less, there is only three of them. But also, this box kind of short-circuits two of them. So there is only two heating elements. And I've been measuring those heating elements, and we might as well just do that again. So if I take my little connection and measure to the one that is common for them all and measure one by one, I have of course turned this off. I'm measuring 53 ohms on one of them, 52.9 on the other one, 52.3 on the last one. So more or less I have three heating elements here, each on 52.5. That's a nice average. If I could power all of them with my solar panels, that would give this wattage. I can't calculate that in my head, but I will do it in video editing. I would like to use that, but I can't. As far as I can see, I still would like to use the security and safety in these devices. I would like it to be able to cut off all power if I'm doing something really stupid. So I need this one to be online. And I would also like it to be able to turn up and down the heat. So I would like this one to be working as well. Luckily, luckily those wires are connected to this one. I just need to connect one to plus of my solar system and two others to the, actually you can see here which wires are what. There's the zero, that's the blue one that was not connected. There's an F for a face. Uh, it's spelled differently here. You call it PH. We call it started with an F. There's a ground connection. I uh, don't really need that. And there is two more faces over here. More or less we need, I need to connect these two faces together and this face. And I will have my solar set up. So what is really going on here? We have the water heater. This is a Dave Cat drawing. I am told that it's called by the famous Dave Jones of the EEV block. He invented this. It's a freeware program, I'm guessing. And um, this is the water heater, and that has the three heating elements that goes inside to heat the water. It also has some sensors from each of these boxes. We're gonna never mind those. But each of these heating elements are short-circuited with one of the leads. All three of them are connected. So only one of each goes out to the controller circuit over here. Now, right now we have 400 volts, but only three of those power leads go through. There is also a ground wire. We're gonna act as if it's not there. That goes through this security box, the last resort box. The water heater is close to explosion. That will cut off all the power. All three of them goes straight through that. And that's just a brake connection for all three leads. And then they come out of that. It would be a really good idea to maintain this. If you haven't seen what happens to a water heater that uh, explodes, and you should probably see this video. And when you've seen that video, you will understand why that's a good idea. Um, two of those leads go down to this thermostat that is able to regulate the heat. How hot does the water in my water heater needs to be? This is the box that does that. One of the leads just goes over to the heating elements. That leads go into one of these heating elements. So that goes through that. Each heating element is of 52.5 ohms. We will get back to that, why that is important. 
the two other goes down through this controller box and as I said earlier they don't switch at the exact same thing first one of them switch off then the other one switch off when everything is good and the water is being heated both of them are switched on and there is power going in through the heating elements this one and this one but that means that for the power to make a connection it always has to go through two heating elements so even though the heating elements is of 52.5 ohms it has to go through two of them which makes the resistance 105 ohms and that's perfectly okay when you're dealing with 400 volts no problem that makes this water heater i think it's 3000 watts when we're dealing with my solar panel is giving out i just measure it um just about 50 volts we are gonna measure we're gonna be calculating with it being 50 volts if i put 50 volts on this system instead of 400 volts we have to use ohm's law for calculating power is this little calculation where you take the voltage and multiply it by itself divide it by the resistance and that equals the power so over here if we are just measuring on one of these that's 50 volts 52.5 ohms that adds up to be 47.6 watts so if i just put my 50 volts on one of these i get 47.6 watts of power out of that but as i said i have to go through two of these every time so if i just connect my 50 volts up here at the plug that means that i have to go through two heating elements with my 50 volts and that adds up to be 105 ohms down here so 50 volts 105 ohms that adds up to be 22.8 watts and that's not a lot that would take a really long time for for that water to heat up using 23 watts what i really like to do is to put 50 watts on each of these that would bring down the resistance to 17.5 watts or more or less I can take this number and multiply that by 3 and I would be able to put in 142.9 watts of power into the water heater. It's still not a lot but it's definitely better than 23.8. We might be able to double that and come up to this number by using both the leads on this but 50 watts of power is still not a lot to get up to these higher numbers i would have to connect to this common one that is not connected right now they're just connected inside of the box here um, but if i bring a wire from this connection and out here where i can connect it to my solar panels i would be able to do that i could bring up the wattage the optimal one would be this for 142.9 but that would mean that this circuit down here would not be usable because i would short circuit that if if i just want to use the leads up here and have both these security measures in place i would only be able to use the two that goes through this box this one down here and that would bring the wattage to 95.2 watts it's a pretty simple hack i go in here and connect a wire and bring it just out i'm not gonna bring it into this plug for the 400 volts that would be a problem but i could have it right next to that if the whole thing breaks all three connections will be broken here and that's the safety when the temperature in the tank reaches where it's supposed to be those two will break and nothing will and no harm will come to anything so i'm probably gonna be going with this 95.2 watts and uh, try that out and it's pretty easy to test that down here is the common connections they are a bit hard to see and here i have a crocodile on a tap 
and it's just because it's hard to get my fingers in there. Here we are. I got a good connection in there. Black lead. And that's for the for the connection here where all three of the heating elements are connected together. There is no other leads coming out of that. So that's the only one that's leaving right now. And it's a black wire and it goes over here. And I'm gonna connect it to my solar panel. And I have a lead coming out of the solar panel system right there. So there we are. The plus lead has not been connected yet, but the plus lead is going to be connected to, to two of the faces here. And if I'm not mistaken, it's these two. So. And just to show you what I have been talking about, I have the connection here. I've hooked up the miners to the black lead coming out of there. And if I measure the different phases here, you see the first one is 53.1, 52.6, 53 53.2. That's each of the heating elements in there that we are measuring out. I could connect all three of them, but then I would not be able to have the safety of the temperature cutting on and off because one of the heating elements would always be on. So let's, I'm just going to be using the two that is going through this thermostat down here that measures the temperature. I'm gonna take the plus lead and I'm just gonna jam it in there because I found that crocodile won't take two, but I can actually just jam it in there and it's on there good. And we will move the minus one. And sure enough, I was getting a few spikes. So let's measure the voltage. We are now putting 51 volts onto the... We're putting in 50.8 volts into the system right now. It will go down a little bit as... Um, so this is kind of the test setup. So right now there's about 95.2 watts going in to try and heat these 300 liters of water that I have. It's gonna take forever, but it's better than not using this power for anything. Right now I'm not using it for anything. I'm still working on my power banks and stuff like that to power the rest of the house. This was something that came up at work and I was talking to a couple of colleagues and I thought I'm gonna go home and try that because then I could use this power for something before the rest of the system is done. Well, I just connected a wire from here and up to the three leads that has been connected together. And I found that my fine drawing that I did here in DaveCat is also kind of in a simple version, much more easy to understand on the back of the cover right here. So here is the three heating elements. Here is the three phases of power coming in. Here's the first switch. Here is the, oh no, that's just the connector. Here's the first switch, the emergency switch thing. And there is the switch to regulate there so well i'm doing this a bit better now so thank you for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see if my house blows up who knows have a nice day bye bye